Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So, we're going to talk about that interview. We're going to talk about Trump's interview. Um, have you ever watched somebody do their best to pretend to understand a subject? And the more they talk, the more you realize they don't have a clue what they're talking about. That's that interview. If I had to describe that interview, that's what it was. There are a number of things that people are bringing up that definitely need attention um, because he got some things wrong. Uh, but there were some other things that aren't catching as much attention that maybe should. You know, he was asked directly about whether or not he ever confronted Putin about some of the some of the allegations that are going on about the bounties, and he said no because it never reached his desk. That's not true. It was in his presidential daily brief. We know that. Okay, it's not true. That's fine. We get it. Trump lied twenty one thousand and two times now. Fine. Okay. He goes on to say that. He, he gets intelligence briefings two or three times a week. A lot of meetings. That's what he says. Seven. He should get a minimum of seven. Presidential daily brief. It's in the name. It's in the name. He should get a minimum of seven intelligence briefings a week. Bragging about going to two or three is like bragging about passing a cognitive test. It's not something anybody who understood it would do. Seven. That's the minimum. That's the minimum you would need to be effective. Because, as he says, the world is angry all over the world. There's a lot of information to process. And it changes daily. That's why there's a presidential daily brief. Seven is the minimum acceptable number. He was uh, questioned about whether he confronted Putin about arming the Taliban because the bounties are in dispute. Um, and he, he didn't do that either. He said he wanted to talk about proliferation, which is fine. That's an important topic. But apparently, the president doesn't understand his own moves, much less Putin's. The president has withdrawn from nuclear proliferation agreements. In fact, all of the ones that Putin didn't like, the U.S. took the step to withdraw. Um, my guess is that he was looking through old footage of Reagan and believed that it it might help him because it helped Reagan um, getting into disarming. But if you spent your entire administration scrapping those treaties, it's not really, it just makes you look like you don't know what you're doing, which is because he doesn't know what he's doing. He then goes on to say that we supplied weapons when they were fighting Russia. That's not true, actually. I mean, I, I get the, the theory that he's saying there, but that, that's an inaccurate statement. We supplied weapons when they were fighting the Soviets. It was a completely different geopolitical situation, literally different countries. If we were to use that line of thinking, we could also say we supplied tanks and Thompsons to the Soviets during World War II. Things change over time. You can't do that, especially when the countries involved have changed forms of government over the years. Every statement that he made displayed a complete lack of understanding of foreign policy. Every single one of them. He's inept. He's incompetent when it comes to this subject. At the end of the day, we can't hold him to too high a standard, though. We need to keep in mind... Putin was one of the greatest intelligence officers of the 20th century. Trump is a failed game show host. 
Putin is smart, sharp, has a deep understanding of these subjects. Witty, he's a good leader. Trump is none of those things. This isn't a fair discussion. Um, the idea that Trump would be able to handle Putin on any level is laughable. So we can't hold Trump to too high a standard when it comes to his outcomes because he demands to deal with him directly. We don't know why. And it's even, Trump is placing himself at even more of a disadvantage by only getting two or three intelligence briefings a week. Not just does he not understand it, not want to protect American forces, he, he makes no effort to get to the point where he could understand it. Now, at the end of the day, there is one important thing that we have to remember here. Trump said that, you know, the arming and then Russia getting bogged down there is what uh, wound up breaking up the Soviet Union. And because of that, that's why the current Russia doesn't want to get involved. Again, a gross misunderstanding of what happened. Today, Russia, the current Russian government, is on the opposite side of where the Soviet government was. They're supplying the, the, the unconventional forces. The U.S. is on the side of where the Soviets were. Um, one thing that we, we do need to keep in mind as this plays out is that in this case, Trump's ineptitude, his inaction, um, his unwillingness to question his boss, all of these things are playing in our favor in the long run. The goal of the Russian operation in Afghanistan is to keep the U.S. bogged down. That's their intent. We've talked about it before. Intent is what is important. Important. That's the intent. They don't want us withdrawn. They want us there expending our energy. So we can't focus on Europe. So we can't focus on the areas they care about. Um, it's hard to withdraw from somewhere when you're constantly taking hits. That's the Russian goal in, in supplying the opposition there. So the fact that the president is inept, um, is overmatched, is actually helping us. Um, it's not helping the individual soldier over there, but it is helping us in the long run. Because if Trump understood the situation, he might respond. And by responding, might embed us even further. Um, and I know people are going to say, well, he, he's trying to leave. That doesn't mean anything. He very quickly changes course when it comes to foreign policy. Look at the proliferation treaties he's talking about. Because he doesn't know what he's doing. When the next administration comes in, they have to have somebody on, on the team, high up, that really understands foreign policy. It is incredibly important. This is a relationship with a world power. It's in complete disarray. Imagine our relationships with the countries that we don't think about, with, question, with countries that aren't in the forefront of Trump's mind. Those relationships have not been managed or nourished in years. The next administration has a mess to clean up. They need to get somebody on board that is equal to the task. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day.